Welcome back everyone. Here we are. We are back on the workbench. However, I thought I'd try something a little bit different today. Um, basically in front of us here is a selection of pistons. Some of them standard, some of them upgrade. Now, each of them is going to be different in their own way. Um, so I thought we'd just do a little video just to explore some of the differences uh, and some of maybe some of the problems uh, and bits that I've come across um, or advantages or disadvantages one over the other. Um, with using the different pistons. So if we just start over here, that is that the Tokyo Marui gun. So that's how they come. Now they are pretty much an all plastic piston with a final metal tooth on the release tooth um, and obviously a plastic piston head. So and they have the springs fixed in them uh, unless you go digging the whole thing out so that's why that's still in there uh, but that is usually what you find in the Tokyo Marui and that will quite happily work super reliably at 0.8 joules uh, which is what the TM normally come out at and that will work forever and ever and ever and ever and ever now that in many ways is similar to this one this is something I've pulled out of a G&G &G gun now it doesn't have the fixed spring in it uh, but it does have mostly plastic teeth with one metal release tooth and a plastic piston head. Um, and again, for most of the G&G &G stuff, the power that comes out of the box, that is adequate to run and run and run and run and run um, until, well, forever really, uh, in most scenarios. Now, as we move along a bit, we're gonna start seeing some of the pistons that I do, which is probably most, the most common upgrade I do on quite a few of the guns that I get to play with. Um, and most of them are gonna involve these two which we will cover shortly. They are an all aluminium piston, and I will go through why I choose those in a moment. Uh, we'll just look at some of the other pistons we've got here. So, this one, that is a plastic body, plastic pickup teeth, and a metal end. In all honesty, it's kind of a halfway house, and realistically, mostly pointless, so I never use them. So we can forget that one, ignore that ever existed. That one I will come back to, because that I have for special occasions and special occasions only. That is a possibility, because that is a plastic piston with a full metal rack of teeth there. Um, now, that is good, because that is both durable and it's reasonably lightweight. And you can drill holes in them, Swiss cheese them, whatever you want to call it, if you need to make them lighter. But that offers you a much more durable setup than say the standard ones, if you are going for a stronger battery, faster rate of fire, stronger spring, that is going to last lots uh, longer. Um, now, that in comparison to these, so these are uh, an all metal, so they're all aluminium, so they do weigh a little more, uh, but in most setups that's not a problem, that only becomes an issue if you're doing a really high speed setup, in my opinion. But the reason I like these, over these, hold on, let's find one that's going to remove. There we go. So, if we take that, and I've got one here that I managed to release earlier. So, this, that piston is one of those. So, when we look at the pickup tooth, which is the bit that has the hardest job, look at the size difference in that compared to that. So, that bit is like a little L shape it has to kind of bounce over the back of the plastic piston so that's fine however I feel that because that is just a solid chunk of metal so that is far more durable doesn't matter which way you look at it that is always going to be more durable so I feel that on one of these um, oh, wrong end idiot that on one of those like so, or one of those, and we'll come to the difference between these two in a moment, is going to be even more longer lasting than one of these ones. So mostly, from my experience of the pistons I've seen, if it's a plastic body, a lot of the time it'll have a tooth that picks up like that. Whereas if it's an all aluminium, because of the way they're designed, they are so much stronger. Now, why do we need to upgrade to these sorts of things anyway? Because these ones, and just to show you, here's one that I've done where it had been broken. That pickup tooth is ripped off eventually. And that ain't going to do anything. 
That is a classic problem when you pull your trigger and your gun just whizzes the gears and does nothing else. It's because that's been ripped off. Now that is likely to have experienced a too powerful a battery or maybe someone had changed the spring in it and it's too powerful and eventually that's given up the ghost. So we upgrade to these to prevent that because that ruins your game day, that does. Means no more play for you. So that's those. Now, what is the difference between these two? Good question. Now, that one is probably my least favourite, uh, but it has its uses. This one is probably the favourite. Now, the only way really to tell the difference between the two is that this has holes down the bottom, and that you usually find, uh, or the ones I've used have had brand names on it, such as things like Big Dragon uh, or Tornado, um, and they're obviously coming out of China from somewhere, but they are brilliant. Those tend to work in most things. This one is a Specknet Arms piston. Now, that doesn't work in everything that does. So what I'm going to do very quickly, I have got a V2 gearbox and a V3 gearbox. Now, just to show you, if we put that piston in here, hold on, if we put that in there, that free flows quite nicely, and even when we engage the two because all I've got in here is one sector gear so that's now got a sector gear on it and that quite happily moves back and forth nice and smoothly this one also will go in that too will move back and forth smoothly so in that gearbox it wouldn't matter which one you used however this one, now this is no, no way a difference between a V2 and a V3, because sometimes this problem you're about to see happens in V2 boxes as well, or even other types of gearboxes, and that is that if I put that one in here, this one is going to work fine. So that's meshing with the teeth perfectly. If I put that on there like that, that will quite happily move really smoothly. So you saw that go back on its own accord there. So that is super smooth. So with that one, there is no issue. Now, if I put this one in, now despite, no matter my best efforts for weighing them up and measuring them and all the rest of it, this, when we put it in the same scenario, that, don't go anywhere, because it's stuck. That is so bumpy and grindy, that's horrible. Now you wouldn't want your AEG one like that because it's going to cause all sorts of problems. I have seen guns that have been brought to me that people have had a go at um, doing an upgrade themselves. They perhaps haven't checked how compatible their piston is with their gearbox and then it jams. So that's wedged. So that is in no way going to run smooth whatsoever. Um, so that one works, that one doesn't, and it's purely because it's getting caught. That works fine in many guns, uh, and it's quite nice because I always try to do that one first if I can, because it means that's going to be a snugger fit and there's going to be less movement, because obviously that, in some dimension, either in the teeth or on the runners, it's going to be that little bit looser where um, that one is going to be a little bit tighter. So if I can use that one, I will. If not, I always go to this one. So that's the reason I have two of those. Now, this one... This, the easiest way of showing this is where we've got the runner down the teeth. That has got very, very smooth sides, so it means the actual track that the teeth are on has more space down either side of it. Now, I've only used these in a few applications. One of them I can think of was a stem, and that was because the way the sector um, to the... Um, I've lost my words now. That, I suggest you try it again, Luke. This time, let go your conscious self and act on instinct. So in the stems, the way the sector was going to the spur gear, I was finding the spur gears were sitting slightly higher. 
which meant that the teeth come up ever so slightly higher and I wanted to tuck up behind this and any piston I had that had the, the plastic side runners down here found on these as well the spur gear was getting caught on that tooth whereas those with a slightly thinner track would function very smoothly without me having to start grinding and cutting and all sorts because obviously on the plastic pistons that that side bit is what's holding in your um, teeth rack so you don't really want to modify it if you want to keep the durability whereas that one is the way it's designed that's got super solid teeth in it and it gave the extra space to clear the spur gear which meant in that particular gearbox which is the only um, occasion I can think of off the top of my head where I needed to use that as an essential where nothing else fitted that kind of got me out of trouble there so that's the reason I have that one um, those are great for high speed build but that's always the first choice that's the second choice if that doesn't fit so hopefully that may have been in, in some way useful for you um, and gives you a bit of an idea of the different types of pistons you can get in your guns um, and some of the things to look for when you're fitting one because unfortunately fitting pistons is not as simple as just drop one in and away you go you need to make sure it's going to run smooth now hopefully that wasn't too boring um, and hopefully it's been useful um, but uh, yeah other than that there's not much more I can say on those, so I will leave it there, and I'll see you all in the next one.